Today is the 14th of September and summer has come to an end but the autumn I would say is a bit early. Suddenly many of the trees are beginning to change colour. Normally this happens at the end of October <clears throat> but because the sun has been so strong in the summer it has ripened the leaves and a lot of the maples are turning red and many of the leaves are in fact falling. This is an Arakawa or rough bark maple, always has very good colour. Even the trident maples have good colour. Normally the trident maples don't have such good colour. I'm just going to pan around and show you this great big trident of ours and look at the colour on this this year. It's another trident. This is more or less the normal colour of trident. Yellowish colour. Not very deep red or pink. I'm just going to walk around the nursery. It's time I had a little walk to show you what is happening. I will show you everything. The evergreens and the deciduous trees. This is a very large five needle pine. It has been cleaned by one of my staff and They've taken off all the yellow needles, so it's looking pretty nice. I'll just walk past each of the trees and show you what to look for. This is a large Satsuki azalea. And those of you who keep Satsukis will realize from time to time that you get yellowing of the leaves come the winter. They don't shed all the leaves, but you will get some shedding of the leaves come the autumn. But don't worry about it. This is quite normal. And just to show you how variable the maples are, this maple has got all its leaves on and yet just next to it, this is a large deshojo, it has virtually shed all its leaves, all growing in the same place. This is a Zalkova serrata group. This is the autumn color. Some of the leaves are red, some of them are yellow, but almost all the leaves have fallen on that. The junipers are growing well and once you get a touch of frost you will get them browning a bit. As I walk through the nursery I will show you what to expect so that you don't get worried. Now this is a very large Satsuki azalea and look at that. It's got a bit of red leaves on it and some yellow leaves and some of the leaves are going to fall. So if you find your Satsuki losing leaves don't panic. It does happen. Now here are some five needle pines. See how yellow this is. This hasn't been cleaned. It's due for cleaning soon. So all you need to do, I'll probably get one of my staff to show you how, what we do. So at this time of the year, we have to clean the needles out. Another large five needle pine there that has been cleaned. And this is the Squamata juniper, blue juniper, but a touch of the cold has started turning it slightly brown and it's not looking that good. Some more maples there. That tree has lost half its leaves. That one has also lost half its leaves. So let's walk around. I grow a lot of our Chinese elms outdoors and these ones that grow outdoors, they will shed their leaves like a normal English elm would. And looking past here, this is a large group, I may have shown this before, grown on a piece of tufa rock, and that's starting to turn the color. But the dawn redwoods, look at the bright, bright reddish orange color of those forest groups of redwood. And uh, there you go. That is typical orange color of dawn redwood. This is the Korean hornbeam. Korean hornbeams always have very nice color. Without fail, they have nice color. I'll show you another one which has got even better color. English shoes, of course, stay green, but in the winter, they will turn that yellowish tinge. We have a lot of Scots pines on the nursery, and this is typical of what you should expect with your Scots pines come the autumn. So from September onwards, the old needles, which are further back in the stem, they will start to turn yellow and all you have to do is clean it up 
as I said, I hope I'll show you what one of my guys are doing. He's just cleaning the needles. Now these junipers are outside on the bench, but they are turning slightly yellow. Once the frost comes, they will turn very yellow. Even if you go to Japan in the winter, you'll find a lot of the Chinese junipers turn a deep brown color. And most people think the trees are dying, but not so. That is quite normal. Of course, the Japanese five needle pines that are grown on their own roots, which this one is, they have a slightly yellow cast anyway. It's mainly the ones that are grafted onto black pine stock that have this deep bluey green color. Next to it, these are on their own roots, so they have another color. So you see the difference between the two types of pines. Five needle pine, those on their own roots are slightly yellow. The ones which are grafted onto black pine stock for some reason are that deep blue. So let me walk around a little more. See the junipers this year, what a lot of berries they have. And I've heard people say, don't let berries grow because they make the tree weak. I don't believe that is so. It's just going through the normal cycle of nature. Nothing to worry about. You can sow the seeds, but I prefer to make cuttings. Cuttings are much easier. You can hear a aeroplane flying overhead. And although we are coming out of lockdown, it's nice to see the aeroplanes flying again. At least it shows that we are getting back to a little bit of normality. I'm just walking in our general nursery area to show you what everything looks like. As we say, this is warts and all. All the uh, blemishes are shown. I'm not trying to hide anything. This is a Korean hornbeam. This is typical Korean hornbeam color. Lovely tree. That tree I've owned since 1974. Very, very old tree. And that's a tree I'm not keen to sell. Okay, as we walk past, it's a crab apple with yellow fruit. Now talk of Korean hornbeam. I just showed you some which were that pinky color. Now look at this Korean hornbeam. It is just pure gold almost with just a hint of uh, orange in it. But that is Korean hornbeam. So it just shows how variable the color can be. I've not noticed it before. Now that Korean hornbeam has turned this beautiful golden color with a hint of pink. And yet next to it, there's another Korean hornbeam, which is still bright green. Look at it. What a difference. And this one just next to it is turning color. And then further on, this Korean hornbeam has almost lost all its colors and the leaves are about to shed. So in the space of about a few feet, we see the contrast in the different Korean hornbeams. One has almost lost their leaves or about to shed their leaves. One is just turning. One is bright green. Another one has turned this beautiful yellowy pink. And then further on the bench, there's one which is a pinky salmon pink color. So the same species, all growing on the same nursery, and yet there is such a variation of color. Just to show you another one, I'm going to pan around. I hope you don't feel seasick. That's another very large Korean hornbeam. And that is turning color as well. That's a massive one. Now these are our Scots pines, I was telling you about them. <clears throat> Look at this one. This one, my colleague has just cleaned the needles off, so it's all bright green. But this one has not been cleaned yet. This has yet got to be cleaned. So once it's cleaned, it will look like this. So from this to this, you will get simply by cleaning the needles. Let's look at another one. This hasn't been cleaned yet. This is due for cleaning. And this hasn't been cleaned either. So these are the chores that have to be done in autumn. It's a tedious job, but it all has to be done. The ginkgos turn a lovely color in the autumn. And this is typical autumn color for the ginkgos. And within a few days, if we got a strong wind, 
there won't be any leaves left. This is a five needle pine. We have cleaned the needles, but the needles keep turning a little bit of yellow, so they may have to be cleaned again. That's another very large mountain maple, but half the leaves have been blown away. And I dare say if we get a strong wind, all the leaves will come off. And look at what that one there. This is a dissectum, which is normally green in color, has very good autumn color. And there you go. All the leaves have fallen on the ground. I'm just walking around to show you what we have. It's an old Chinese juniper that I've had for again many, many years. This is the Japanese yew. This was styled by Marco in Venezia. If Marco is watching, this is one he did about 12, 15 years ago. And this raw material I purchased from Nagoya in Japan. And he turned the tree around and made it into this beautiful shape. Every year I have these beautiful yew berries, typical yew berries that you get on yew. The English yew is not much different. So the Japanese yew and English yew always have these beautiful berries. I don't always put lime sulfur in the gin every year. Usually lime sulfur is put on when we put it on show, but uh, I may do it just to make it look more presentable because I'm going to be a, on television pretty soon. I'll tell you more about that on another occasion. And yesterday we did a Zoom conference for my Indian bonsai fans. And I believe about four or 500 people watched all over India. And we did a two hour program on Zoom about gins and sharis. So I will be doing that on YouTube a special program on gins and sherries because we've got so many examples of it. So that will be a treat to look forward to. Another of the Scots pines. This has not yet been cleaned, but this one has been cleaned. So you see the difference. Just by cleaning it, the tree will look spruce. That's a beautiful dissectum, tall Japanese dissectum. And that's my large cedar group. And this is all within the space of 20 feet wide by about 40 or 50 feet long. There's more to show. Again, just to reassure you, Hinoski cypress, Camisipris obtusa, they also turn yellow. So don't panic when you see this. In autumn, the evergreen trees, especially the pines, Camisipris, they will shed their leaves shed their old needles i mean and you will get new leaves next year that's one of our edible figs nice small leaves from leaf cutting i'm just going to walk now into our main specimen area where i keep some of my own personal trees this is a beautiful Sabina juniper, which I've had for many, many years. Beautiful gins and sharis on this. That's a Japanese Zalkova broom, which I've been training for the last 30 years. That's looking very nice this year. Now this is a Scots pine. Now these needles have been cleaned. So that tree is looking really pristine. And this, in case you don't know what it is, this is Enchianthus. Anchianthus is a Japanese shrub, very popular as a garden shrub, but look at the vivid autumn color on that. Another Scots pine, and the needles have been cleaned already. <clears throat> this is a larch. This is the tanuki, or false wood. And it's just about to turn its autumn color. Now this pine, a few yellow needles are still left on it, but we've cleaned it, but they keep getting needles, but we'll remove the needles as it occurs. This one hasn't been cleaned, so you can see the state of that. And these are the pink wisteria. The leaves do turn yellow and they will drop. 
these pines have been cleaned these have all been cleaned look at that these are all cleaned looking very nice and if my my turn around <clears throat> this is a large European hornbeam that I made more than 35 years ago I used to display it at Wisley back in 1997 and in all those years the last 25 years I've only repotted that tree once it just shows that you don't have to repot that frequently now this is our border this is rosemary and this is a Japanese plant called Lespedeza Japanese bush clover beautiful herbaceous shrub so I'm just showing you what our garden looks like because not everything I grow is bonsai I always have great pleasure making displays of other plants I love dahlias the only trouble is dahlias keep getting eaten by slugs when they're young but Finally, I've managed to get quite a few flowers from the dahlias. Now this great big white pine, this is the one which was loaned for making the James Bond film. That, that film is not released yet, but this was loaned for making the James Bond film. And again, we haven't cleaned it yet. So there are a lot of brown needles or yellow needles, which we will have to clean. And once it's clean, the tree will look quite nice. So let me move on and show you something else. I'm now going to show you some of these maples which are grown in shade. This is our shade area. And if I don't want the plants to get burnt too badly by the sun, we grow them in shade. So these maples are grown in shade so they don't get such vivid autumn color. This massive, great Japanese five needle pine, look at the size of the trunk on that. This trunk is every bit 12 inches in diameter. And this one is covered in yellow needles. Bunches of it fall off in my hand. And this has to be cleaned out. So I'm waiting for my colleague to do this. These are our crab apples. I think the trees speak for themselves. I don't have to make a commentary. Just to show you the beauty that is always around here. Every uh, season in the year, spring, summer, and now autumn. And I dare say I will show you pictures of it in the winter as well, when the trees have got no leaves on, because even with no leaves, all trees, including bonsai, look splendid. If you remember some of our videos, I show these cryptomerias at different seasons. In the winter, they turn bright red or yellow or orange even. This is still in its summer color. The autumn color is just beginning. Look at this one, it's turning brown. Once you get the first frost, it will turn completely brown and you think the tree is dead. But inside, where it doesn't get the frost, it's bright green. So those of you who grow cryptomeria, do not panic this is quite quite normal this is a beech tree and they get a lovely yellow golden color i must show you the color of this shishigashira shishigashira is a lovely maple it's a very slow growing maple look at it in a year, you'll barely get one or two inches of growth when grown in pots as bonsai. 
Very tight growth, but the autumn color is really spectacular. And this is that cryptomeria that I cleaned. It was the subject of another video earlier on the year. Because of the lockdown, I haven't returned it to the customer. But this is a customer's tree. We have olives as bonsai and these are the olive fruit. They're not mangoes, they look like mangoes, but they're olive fruit on these great big olive trees. This is that great big privet, you remember that I did? The privet from the toilet. Now this is our greenhouse which we grow our trees and train our trees. I call it the intensive care unit and everything continues to grow and because it's protected I continue to get uh, the plants growing for at least another month. So these will not turn red till well into November. This is a trick that I've been trying for years by extending the period of growth, I get more growth in the plants. Some of them are turning color. And this is just a view of what we have. These are all plants for experiments. While we're growing them, we try different tricks. We try different methods to see what happens to them. And the air layering is a continuous process of experimentation. We always do different things to see if we get different results. As I was saying, not all the tridents have good color. This is that big trident and the color is not that good. Trident maples don't always have good color. I will be showing you some catch-up and if I can just do a quick catch-up here I'm just passed by and this is the tree that I split in two it's growing very nicely it's going to be a split trunk literati and this is the other part which I split and this is going to be a small tree the big portion died, but look at it, about two feet of growth, all since the spring. This has to be, to be reshaped and repruned, and you will see this in another video. These are trees that we used for the talk and demonstration about gins and sharis. So one of these days I'll come back to these because we are forever working on them. And one of my staff here are applying lime sulfur on some of the trees because we're going to have the BBC coming here to film. So we're going to tidy up some trees just for the display. As I say, I'm not always very uh, good at keeping them constantly lime sulfured because it's really only for exhibitions and shows that I put lime sulfur on. The wood doesn't rot that easily, so I'm not unduly worried. Now these use, they're in different processes of uh, training and different stages of training. So this is where we have to exercise patience. I won't be able to make a bonsai in 10 minutes or half an hour. Some of these do take a long time. Just to take you into another area, 
We always have things on the go. These are magnolia air layerings, which I did only in the summer. And look at it. I have about three or four this year, which successfully rooted. And our figs, we continue to keep them protected. Look at the large figs here. They're all full of fruit. This is a Chinese quince. That's the color of the foliage of Chinese quince. Crab apples. Pomegranate. And these are cuttings, you know, we'd actually make cuttings here, a lot of cuttings. These are Chinese juniper. I think they are Kisu cuttings. I also have Itoigawa cuttings and they are more difficult to make. Itoigawa is very slow. So these are all cuttings in different stages of development. These are azalea cuttings and they've all taken, they've all rooted. And these are all cuttings that we've made of different things. This is a very rare Picea. So these have only taken like six months to root and they're growing well. And these are Itoigawa cuttings. Although it looks like a jungle, but there are lots of precious things here. And they're all growing. We love propagating, growing different things. So there you are, that's a batch of hardwood cuttings of Korean hornbeam. And these are Korean hornbeam seedlings. So some of the Korean hornbeams did root from cuttings and they, we grow them from seeds as well. These little rose cuttings from our Japanese roses. And these again, Satsuki cuttings that have rooted. So there's always something to do. And those yellow leaves in the distance, that is mulberry. I let them grow to make it strong and then I'll trim it back possibly in the spring. I will show you another plant in the distance there. There is that great big maple that we dug out from the ground. It had that girdling root and with a pickaxe. If you remember, we made it into a big bonsai. And there it is. Because it's been protected in this tunnel, the color has not turned red as yet but it will and look at the callusing here you see where we cut it off you see how the bark has rolled over and it will completely heal over in time so don't worry when you cut anything hard they will always callus you see the callusing on the root there all that will be healed over so nature is really wonderful what it can do i'm now going to walk in my maple area because it's a nice day and a lot of the trees are beginning to turn red. The maples that we grow in the ground usually turn red at the end of October into early November but already they are beginning to turn that spectacular color. Look at that, absolutely beautiful. A bit early, but no matter, I have yet to see more color. I'm just going to walk out into one of our maple areas because we have a whole field of maples. I will take you there eventually. It's just to show you how we grow our things. A lot of our junipers we grow in large pots to make them strong and then we restyle them again. So that's where they are.
And these are the maples that we grow either for Japanese garden trees or we grow them for making into bonsai. Unfortunately, there are so many now that I have lost many of the labels. I'll try and remember what they are, but because of the number that we have, it's always difficult to keep track and to keep tabs on them. The Nomuras, of course, I keep close watch on because they were trees that I imported from Japan in 1990. And the autumn color of Nomura is always spectacular. Always spectacular. Look at the color of all the maples. I think this is certainly my favorite tree. I don't think there is any other tree as beautiful as the Japanese maple or Momiji. And autumn is the time when they are at their very best. This I would say is Osaka Zuki. Osaka Zuki has very distinctive leaf shape. That is Osaka Zuki. This also is Osaka Zuki. Some people think that Osaka Zuki has the best autumn color. There are lots of other maples that have good autumn color, but Osaka Zuki is one of them. I wouldn't say it's the only one. And that's a large Nomura that I planted in the ground. That's every bit about, I would say 30 to 40 feet tall. And yet the ones that I kept in the pots for the last 30 years are only about two meter tall, about six foot tall. So if you grow it in the ground, this is the size of maple you can get. These are the green dissectums and the green dissectums turn this lovely orangey color. Now I'm just going to turn around. I hope it won't make you seasick because I want to show you a Senkaki or Sangokaku. Senkaki is a maple that doesn't turn bright red. It stays an orangey color. I have another one which is orange in color. This is more yellow. So that's the Senkaki or Sangokaku, which is only yellow in color. And that's the giant redwood beside it that was planted in 1991. And the trunk diameter is about three meters, I would say. And the tree is about easily 90 foot tall now. that. I think this is Osaka Zuki and this is going to be a bonsai. This we cut from a big tree and that's going to become a bonsai in its own right. This is a red, rather rare tree. It's called Nishiki Gasane. It's a variegated uh, leaf color so you can still see a bit of the variegation. But in the autumn, it does turn this lovely color. But this one has turned color. And yet another one, this is the same tree, Nishiki Gasane. It has this variegated leaf color. And this one hasn't started turning color yet. So it just shows how variable maples can be. Now these maples here were all about six to eight foot high trees. And during the past summer, if you remember, I did uh, a chopping exercise where we cut them down to about two feet and they're all in the process of being made into bonsai. These will all become bonsai. They look a bit sorry for themselves, but they were cut severely. But no matter, next year they will grow nicely again. This is that huge Chinese elm air layering. And again, because it's so large, I will probably make it into three trees now. It's much too big for a single tree. And besides, it's got what we call inverse taper over there. So 
that top portion will be airlayed again. But elms airlay ever so easily, so I don't have any worries about it being successful. I will now take you for a walk into my main field where we grow the maples. So this is our main field growing area where we grow trees in the ground and then when they're mature enough they're lifted and put into pots and this is our seven acre field where we grow all the maples so you can see there are literally thousands of maples everywhere. This is one of my favorite areas because so much happens here. While I'm here, let me show you Zalkova serrata, Japanese grey bark elm, much overlooked tree. As ordinary trees, they have this beautiful shape and form and they have lovely autumn color. These were the famous trees that were grown for bonsai, but they became too big. So I only have 50 of them left. I had to cut down 250 because they were too big. And some of the stumps were used for bonsai, but the rest, you know, were not really suitable because I lost control. And amongst that lot, there's large Chinese elms, which are 60 feet tall, tried maple 60 feet tall. And these are the maples always something going on here I'm only concentrating on the maples we have other trees and plants but because this is autumn I'm just going to show you our beautiful maples which we have a lot of look at them look at them just fields and fields of red. And because this is a working nursery, some of my staff are still mowing the grass. We have a dry day for a change. I have a grapevine here too going. And these are some of the rare maples that I have. That one is Osaka Zuki and this one is probably Kotonoito harp string. And we grow maples in the ground. These are grown in the ground to get thick fast. So those are little seedlings which are planted about five years ago. So those trees are no more than six years old. But because they're planted in the ground, they will thicken very fast. Most of these very colorful ones are just ordinary Asa palmatum, which the Japanese simply refer to as mountain maple, Yama Momiji. But we've taken the precaution to lift them and put them in pots because if they're left in the ground too long, you lose control and you will not be able to lift it easily. Because we sow a lot of maples from seed, we try different types of seed sowing techniques. So these are seedlings growing on. So there are maples at every stage of development. So if you visit herons, you're always sure to find something to suit your taste. Look at it. We like to think that there is no nursery like this. Certainly not in the UK. We don't grow maples usually in the greenhouse unless we are growing it to restyle or propagate from. 
We like to grow them in the open because they make much stronger trees. These are the rough bark elms. You can see the bark, Arakawa. Very favorite tree for bonsai and Japanese maple connoisseurs, mainly because of the unusual bark and the autumn color. These are Japanese yew, which I purchased when they're very small and I'm trying to make Japanese garden trees with them. So this is a long-term job. Whether they will ever be finished, I'm not sure but we have fun growing it. So, on that note, looking at those beautiful Zelkova trees and looking at the Heron's house, I will bring this to an end. And later on in the summer, I will take another walk around the nursery and show you what Heron's is like in autumn. Hope you've enjoyed that. Sorry for not appearing on the video, but I'm standing behind the camera taking the video. Thanks a lot. Bye.